Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a pituitary neuroendocrine tumor. The older nomenclature for this tumor is pituitary adenoma, so these two terms are interchangeable, with the current term being pituitary neuroendocrine tumor. This is a rather fragmented biopsy, but I'm going to focus on the more solid areas. So let's look at this area and we can see that this is a tumor composed of sheets of cells. The cells appear to be very uniform. The nuclei are rather round and they are more or less uniform in size and shape throughout the tumor. This tumor is composed of not very well-defined nests of lesional cells and they are interspersed with a very delicate vascular network. As you can see, I'm pointing out the small vascular spaces. In some areas, the nested architecture is a little bit more obvious. For example, over here, we can appreciate a more nested architecture. Some of these tumors also have a more sheet-like architecture, whereas others are arranged in trabecular forms. In this particular area, the tumor cells appear to have more prominent nucleoli, but in general, the lesional cells of pituitary neuroendocrine tumors do not exhibit macronucleoli. Let's have a look at an area where the nuclear chromatin is well demonstrated. Here we can see the nuclear chromatin quite clearly, and typically the nuclear chromatin of neuroendocrine tumors has a stippled appearance. This means that it looks somewhat granular. This particular case shows some coarse granules here, and in other tumors we can see more clearly what we call a salt and pepper appearance of the chromatin, and this means that the chromatin has coarse granules, which is the pepper, and you can see the coarse granules here. But in addition, it also has finer granules, which is the salt. Hence, sometimes we use the term salt and pepper chromatin. You may also hear the term stippled chromatin to describe this type of chromatin in neuroendocrine tumors. Again, we can see that many of the nuclei have small nucleoli, but they are not prominent macronucleoli. It would also be important to look for mitotic figures in this tumor because tumors that are more mitotically active tend to have a higher chance for aggressive behavior. Let me show you another example. Here is another example of a pituitary neuroendocrine tumor. And you can see that this tumor has a more sheet-like architecture again. The cells have a very monotonous look to it with round nuclei and moderately abundant cytoplasm. And again, we are able to see many small vessels coursing through the lesional tissue. Sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish between normal anterior pituitary gland and a pituitary neuroendocrine tumor, particularly if the biopsy is very small and very fragmented. One useful marker or stain that we can do is reticulin, where we would expect a disrupted reticulin staining pattern with much less or fewer reticulin fibers in a pituitary neuroendocrine tumor compared to the normal anterior pituitary gland, which shows a very nice nested reticulin pattern. Let me show you an example. This is a normal pituitary gland showing the anterior pituitary. We can see a sort of a nested architectural pattern, again with a very prominent but delicate vascular network. Let's have a quick look at the reticulin stain. This is the typical appearance of a reticulin stain. Reticulin is a type of connective tissue, and we can see this very beautiful, clear cut nested appearance of reticulin fibers going around the nests of normal cells in the anterior pituitary gland. Now let's contrast this with the pituitary neuroendocrine tumor that we just saw. And here is the reticulin stain for the pituitary neuroendocrine tumor. We can see that we have completely lost that beautiful compartmentalized pattern of reticulin staining. We only have some residual staining around blood vessels. And as I move around, again, we can see how that nice nested pattern is lost. 
Now let's take a quick look at the gross appearance of a pituitary adenoma. This is a virtual pathology specimen showing a coronal section of the brain and we can see here that there is a very large, quite fleshy, solid appearing mass in the region of the cella tersica. We turn it the other way around and again you can see that in this mass now there are some areas of hemorrhage. This is compressing on the optic chiasm and this is the reason why often these patients complain of banging into things and this is due to visual field defects. As we scroll down we can also see additional information and this virtual pathology museum is from our online resource path web and scrolling down we can see some examples of gross microscopic images as well as talking pots and talking slides. If you would like full access to our Virtual Pathology Museum and Path Web, registration is free and the link is in the video description. Hence, in summary, this is an example of a pituitary neuroendocrine tumour, previously known as pituitary adenoma, and these tumours are composed of sheets, trabecular formations or nests of relatively uniform cells with round nuclei, with salt and pepper chromatin or stippled chromatin and sometimes small nucleoli. Clinically, these patients may present with endocrine effects, for example, acromegaly in patients with somatotroph, pituitary adenomas producing growth hormone, or Cushing syndrome in patients with increased ACTH from corticotroph pituitary adenomas. Patients can also present with visual field defects due to compression of the optic chiasm. Thank you.